Hello uh, and welcome to the tenth module of this uh, course, Mechanics of Fiber Reinforced Polymer Composite Structures. Uh, in our last module, that is in the ninth module, we have uh, discussed in details uh, the failure of laminate. We understood how to actually uh, calculate the first ply failure load and then uh, the last ply failure load. Okay. Uh, starting with classical lamination theory, we have actually calculated the stresses in all the lamina of a laminate and then using appropriate uh, failure criterion. It could be uh, maybe maximum stress criterion or it could be uh, uh, psi hill uh, with, uh, failure criterion. We could actually find out what is the failure load of a laminate. So, having understood that in, in this module, we will try to solve uh, uh, design and analysis of uh, some common components. Okay. So, uh, in, in today's lecture specifically, uh, we will consider uh, the design of a thin cylindrical pressure vessel and we will try to uh, solve one problem through which actually uh, we will be able to appreciate that how uh, using uh, this uh, fiber reinforced composite uh, materials uh, could actually lead to uh, weight savings. Okay. Uh, so, let us start with uh, a problem uh, uh, today like suppose uh, we start with uh, a problem of say suppose we have a thin cylinder okay, which is a containing uh, Suppose you have a thin cylindrical pressure vessel, say it is say closed at both the ends, okay, it is closed at both the ends, okay. So, suppose this is a thin cylindrical pressure vessel, and say if you see it is a side view, it is a circular okay. say it has a thickness okay. say the thickness is say h h is the thickness and these ends are closed okay these ends are closed it is containing a fluid with internal pressure p okay and this is also subjected to say a twisting moment t Okay. So, this is a okay. Suppose this is uh, made of aluminum. This is made of aluminum, okay, with uh, having uh, say uh, having a uh, ultimate uh, I mean the yield point stress as 250 mega Pascal and say density of aluminum is say 2800 kg per meter cube. Okay. Suppose it is uh, the intensity of internal pressure P is say 2 mega Pascal and the twisting moment T is 315 say kilo Newton meter. Okay. Suppose the internal diameter of the cylinder is 1 meter it is a thin cylinder that means h is very very small compared to d and uh, now uh, say it is operating at 
room temperature. Okay, and we may neglect the curing residual stresses, the curing residual stresses due to curing may be neglected. Okay. We will we'll, uh, again come back to this. Okay. Now, what we would like to see in this example is uh, we will analyze this uh, pressure vessel when it is made of aluminum, then we will see if we replace aluminum by uh, means of a fiber composite, then how much weight savings we get. Okay? Let us see this. First, let us analyze this uh, pressure vessel. Suppose, uh, the operating uh, factor of safety, say, is 1.3. Okay? Uh, therefore, uh, we need to first find out if this pressure vessel is actually subjected to this internal pressure P 2 mega Pascal and experiencing a twisting moment 315 kilo Newton meter and its uh, internal diameter is 1 meter and if it has to operate with a factor of safety of 1.3, what is the minimum thickness? Okay. What is the minimum thickness? So, how do you do that? We all have done our uh, in our undergraduate, we have done uh, cylindrical uh, pressure vessels, thin cylinders specifically. Okay. So, if we consider uh, uh, the cylinder, uh, thin cylinder subjected to, if we consider this thin cylinder. Uh, I think we, we all know what is a thin cylinder okay? when the ratio of the mean radius to the thickness is actually more than 10. Okay? So, the hoop stress or circumferential stress is actually P D by 2 T okay? where T is the thickness of the cylinder. In this case, it is H. Okay. And the longitudinal stress sigma 2 is equal to P d by 4 t. I think we all know this. In this case, it is h. Now, if we take a, uh, from this cylinder, if we take a small element from this cylinder, okay, we take a small element. Now, this is our x say. Okay. So, Considering a small element, from the cylinder, okay. So, this is sigma x, this is sigma y, now what is sigma x? With reference to this, what is sigma x? Sigma x is nothing but the longitudinal stress sigma 2. Okay? Therefore, sigma x is equal to sigma 2 is equal to P d by 4 h okay? and sigma y is nothing but the circumferential stress sigma y is nothing but sigma 1 which is the hoop stress is equal to P d by 2 h. Okay? In addition to that, because it is experiencing a twisting moment. Okay. So, what is the torsional shear stress? The torsional shear stress, this is actually uh, the torsional shear stress tau 
x y is equal to if t is the twisting moment t, j is the polar moment of inertia and this is r, r is the in radius. Okay? This is r which is nothing but d by 2. Okay? Uh, now, for a uh, thin circular uh, cylinder, what is the uh, uh, torsional, uh, I mean polar moment of inertia? Polar moment of inertia is given by twice pi r cube into h. Okay? This is the polar moment of inertia for this if this is x, this is y. So, j is equal to i x x plus i y y and we know i x for this is uh, uh, I mean pi r cube into h, this is h, okay, this is r. Therefore, j is i x plus i y twice pi r cube into h and this is r. So, this is equal to t by twice pi r square h. We can write in terms of d because all other states we have written in terms of d. Therefore, tau x y is equal to if we write in terms of d it is twice t by pi d square h. Okay? So, what is the uh, what are the stresses acting? Sorry. The stresses acting are sigma x, sigma y, sigma x is equal to P d by 4 h, sigma y is equal to P d by 2 h and there is shear tau x y is equal to twice t by pi d square h. Okay? So, now if we put these values here, If we put this values of P d, so we get sigma x is equal to uh, P d by 4 h. So, h we do not know, therefore, we can write this as uh, uh, 2 d is uh, I think d is given as 1 meter, right d is given as d is 1 meter. Therefore, uh, suppose we write in millimeter 1000 millimeter by 4 h. Therefore, this is actually 500 by h. Uh, Newton per millimeter square because P is given in 2 mega Pascal, P in, is in mega Pascal that means 2 Newton per millimeter square. Okay? Therefore, this is sigma x and sigma y is equal to similarly P d by 2 h is equal to 2 by 2 h is 1000 by h and tau x y is equal to twice t by 
pi d square h when you put these values uh, 2 into 315 kilo Newton millimeter that means new kilo Newton meter therefore, this is Newton uh, millimeter. So, pi into I am just writing everything in terms of Newton and millimeter therefore, this is this comes out to be 200 by h Newton per millimeter square. Okay. So, this is the uh, state of stress. Okay. Now, uh, we can find out the principal stresses, we can find out, we can determine the principal stresses for this state of stress, we can determine what is the principal stress sigma x plus sigma y by 2 plus minus root of sigma x minus sigma y by 2 square plus tau x y square. So, when you put this we get sigma 1 is equal to 1070 Newton per millimeter square, sigma 2 is 430 by h Newton per millimeter square and of course, this is a two dimensional state of stress sigma 3 is equal to 0. Okay. Now, this is an aluminum, this cylinder is made of aluminum, it is a ductile material. Therefore, uh, we could use uh, von Mises uh, stress criterion that means, distortion energy theory. So, we can use that uh, distortion energy theory which is also the von Mises uh, equivalent stress criterion. So, we can use using von Mises criterion sigma 1 minus sigma 2. I think we have discussed these things in detail. You have also studied this thing in your undergraduate. Failure theories for isotropic materials is equal to root 2 sigma y divided by factor of safety. So, uh, using this value of sigma 1 and sigma 2 and sigma 3 is of course, 0 and we have the values for sigma y, we have factor of safety as 1.3. Uh, therefore, this will be h will come out 1 by h. Uh, this is sigma 1 is uh, 1070 by h therefore, plus sigma 2 is sigma 3 is 0 half is equal to root 2 into this is 250 mega Pascal factor of safety is 1.3 and this gives us h is equal to 4.84 millimeter. Okay. So, using distortion energy theory or von Mises criterion, we get the thickness of the aluminum cylinder as 4.84 millimeter, so that it does not fail okay. or we can take this as 5 mm. Now, this is how we analyze uh, a thin cylindrical pressure vessel. Okay. So, uh, we get uh, the minimum thickness as 4.84 and we adopt thickness of the cylinder as 5 mm. Of course, it is thin cylinder you can see that the ratio is ratio of r by t is very large. Okay. Uh, now, the objective of this uh, solving this problem has been that suppose now we want to replace the material by means of fiber composition why. Suppose, we want to uh, the objective is to uh, weight uh, I mean reduce the weight 
Okay, we need to reduce the weight. Okay, therefore, to reduce the weight, suppose we use in order to reduce the weight, say we would like to replace aluminum by say carbon epoxy. Okay. Now, if you remember that uh, what, is, what was the state of stress? The state of stress was like this. It was subjected to sigma x, it is subjected to sigma y, it is also subjected to in plane shear okay, tau x y. Therefore, it must be strong and stiff along x. How do you achieve this? We must have some 0 degree lamina. I think you understand what is 0 degree when the fibers actually are aligned along x. Okay. It must be strong and stiff along y because it is subjected to sigma y also and that is taken care by we having 90 degree lamina. It is also experiencing shear in the xy plane, therefore, strong and stiff against in plane shear, and that is taken care by plus minus 45 degree lamina. We have discussed these things in details. Okay, how the strength and stiffnesses do vary with the fiber orientation. Okay. Therefore, with this in mind, say we decide to choose a laminate which is 0 plus minus 45, 90 degree twice symmetric meaning there are 1, 2, 3, 4 that means there are 16 lamina or 16 plies. Okay. Made of say high strength carbon epoxy. with say properties of unidirectional carbon epoxy say E 1 is equal to 140 giga Pascal, E 2 is equal to 10 giga Pascal, nu 1 2 is equal to 0.28 and G 1 2 is equal to 6 giga Pascal. These are the four engineering constants okay, for the unidirectional carbon epoxy which is a orthotropic lamina and we also have the strength parameters longitudinal tensile strength as 2280 mega Pascal. longitudinal compression strength as 1725 mega Pascal transverse tensile strength as 
57 mega Pascal and transverse compression strength as 228 mega Pascal and in plane shear strength as 76 mega Pascal. Okay. Suppose we choose this as the material and this is the stacking sequence and suppose the thickness of each ply is 0.25 mm. That means, what is the total uh, laminate thickness which implies laminate thickness how many layers are there total 16 lamina therefore it is total is 16 into 0.25 so it is 4 mm now suppose we we decide to replace aluminum by means of this 4 mm thick laminate and then we would like to see i mean whether this is safe and if it is safe, whether it is within the operating desired factor of safety of 1.3 or not. Okay. So, to start with, that means we have a laminate which is 0, I am just expanding it plus 45, minus 45. 90 twice symmetric there are 16 layers okay uh, and this laminate suppose we take a small piece from the cylinder okay so this is subjected to sigma x sigma y and tau x y. So, in the in the convention of uh, uh, like uh, following the convention of classical lamination theory, this is subjected to force resultant of n x, n y and in plane force resultant n x, n y and n x n x y. What are those in plane force resultant? Let us see. We know we have seen just now that this element is actually subjected to sigma x, uh, which is 500 by h. Just uh, see the last slide. This is what is sigma x, sigma y is 1000 by h, tau x y is 200 by h. Okay. Newton per millimeter square or mega Pascal, which implies n x is nothing but what is n x? The force resultant along x okay, per unit. Okay. Therefore, this is sigma x into h. Therefore, this is 500 mega Pascal. Similarly, sigma y which is 1000 by h Newton per millimeter square or mega Pascal implies n y is equal to sigma y into h is equal to 1000 mega Pascal and tau x y which is 200 by h Newton per millimeter square or mega Pascal implies that n x y is equal to tau x y into h is equal to uh, 200 sorry this is not uh, this is not mega Pascal the units are actually Newton per millimeter okay Newton per millimeter this is 1000 Newton 
per millimeter 200 Newton per millimeter. Okay. So, now this is the laminate which is experiencing these forces. Now, we will have to now where from these forces have come these are as a result of this n x n y n x y are due to the internal pressure p and the twisting moment t. Now, we will have to see whether this is safe under this loading or not. Okay. And so, we know how we go about from classical lamination theory. So, what we do now is that we have the laminate and we have the stacking sequence, uh, we have this laminate is 0 plus minus 45 90 twice symmetric okay. and we, we have E 1, E 2, nu 1 to G 1 to for unidirectional lamina is given. So, what we do is for uh, an U D carbon epoxy lamina, we find out, we determine the reduced stiffness reduced recall what is reduced stiffness matrix from your macro mechanical analysis of lamina reduced stiffness matrix q how q is a 4 by 4 matrix q 1 1 q 1 2 0 q 2 to 0 q 6 6. How we get this? We get this from q 1 1 is equal to e 1 by 1 minus nu 1 to nu 2 1 q 2 to is equal to e 2 by 1 minus nu 1 to nu 2 1 q 1 2 is equal to nu 2 1 nu 1 to e 2 by 1 minus nu 1 to nu 2 1 okay. or you can write this as nu 2 1 E2, we have the reciprocal relationship nu 1 2 E1 1 is equal to nu 2 1 E2 2, and Q66 6 is nothing but G12. Okay. So, putting the values of uh, this, we already have the values for the four engineering constants for the lamina E1, E2, nu 1, 2, G12. And therefore, we could get all the elements of the reduced stiffness matrix that means q 1 1, q 1 2, q 2 2, q 6 6. Okay. Uh, then what we do? Uh, in this case, uh, once we have this uh, q matrix, so in this case the q matrix comes out to be, uh, if you put those values, the q matrix comes out to be uh, once we put these values of E 1, the Q matrix one point four one into ten to the power eleven three point four two into ten to the power nine zero uh, one into ten to the power 10, 0, 6 into 10 to the power 9, 
this is in be careful about the unit this is in Newton per meter square. Okay. So, once we have the Q matrix, now we have 16 lamina in that laminate. Okay. First one is 0, then plus 45, then minus 45, then 90, again it repeats 0 plus 45 minus 45 90 and symmetric after that it reflects. Okay. So, I have just shown 8 layers here. So, again it reflects therefore, total 16 layers. So, we can now find out the transform reduced stiffness for each of these lamina. Okay. I think we have discussed in details in classical lamination theory how we actually find out the stresses and strains in each of the lamina. So, from this Q we can actually find out the reduced transform stiffness matrix for each of the lamina depending upon its fiber orientation. Okay. Like uh, this is actually denoted by q bar say for a angle theta this is actually T inverse into Q into T. What is T? T is the stress transformation matrix, okay, where T is uh, for a given theta T is cos square theta sin square theta twice sin theta cos theta sin square theta cos square theta minus twice sin theta cos theta minus sin theta cos theta plus sin theta cos theta cos square theta minus sin square theta. This is the stress transformation matrix okay, in two dimension and T inverse is cos square theta sin square theta minus 2 i sin theta cos theta sin square theta cos square theta 2 i sin theta cos theta sin theta cos theta minus sin theta cos theta cos square theta minus sin square theta. This happens to be also T of minus theta. Okay. So, we can find out the reduced transform stiffness matrix for each layer. Okay. So, using this uh, we can find out the reduced transform stiffness matrix for each of these layers. So, I will just I uh, will not uh, uh, therefore, for each layer or each lamina say q bar 0, this will be nothing but q, okay. q bar 0 will be same as q, uh, this is uh, just now I have written 1.4 1 into 10 to the power 11, then 3.42 into 10 to the power 9, 0, 1 into 10 to the power 10, 0, 6 into 10 to the power 9, q bar 90, we may use the transformation now and we get q bar 90 as 1 into 10 to the power 10, 3.42 into 10 to the power 9, 0, 1.41 into 10 to the power 11, 
0 6 into 10 to the power 9. I am not writing the these are all in Newton per meter square. Okay. Similarly, for plus 45 q bar plus 45 4.5 into 10 to the power 10 3.35 into 10 to the power 10 3.27 into 10 to the power 10 the same 4.5 into 10 to the power 10 and 3.27 into 10 to the power 10 3.6 into 10 to the power 10. This is for plus 45. Similarly, for minus 45, four point five into 10 to the power 10, three point three five into 10 to the power 10, minus three point two seven into 10 to the power 10, four point five into 10 to the power 10 minus 3.27 into 10 to the power 10 and 3.6 into 10 to the power 10. Okay, these are all in Newton per meter square. Okay. So, similarly because these are the four distinct uh, lamina, now they repeat. Okay. Therefore, we have found out the, the reduced transform stiffness matrix for each of these 0 degree, plus 45, minus 45 and 90 degree. Okay? And therefore, using this, using q bar for each layer and stacking sequence information that means location of each lamina and their thickness we can calculate we can determine the laminate abbd matrix for the laminate okay now in this case we have considered since we considered a symmetric laminate, therefore, as a consequence of that, B matrix vanish, therefore, the elements of B matrix are all 0, okay. and uh, therefore, we can uncouple. Therefore, therefore we can write, therefore we can write as we know that the in plane force and moment resultant are related to the mid surface strains and curvatures by means of this ABBD matrix. Now, because it is symmetric, therefore, we can decouple that, we can write that n is equal to a okay. that means we can expand this that the in plane force resultants n x, n y, n x y is equal to A matrix into the mid surface strains. Okay, we could decouple that because it is a symmetric laminate. Okay. Now, we know that uh, we can find out the elements of ABBD matrix using this 
q bar for each layer and the stacking sequence information. Now, because it is only subjected to in plane load, therefore, we need only A and we know from classical elimination theory the definition of A matrix that is the extensional stiffness k going from 1 to number of layers n q bar k into z k minus z k minus 1 that is nothing but the thickness which is actually k going from 1 to n q bar k into t k thickness. Okay. Therefore, we can find out what is a matrix using because we, we now we have q bar for each layer, we also have the thickness of each layer. Therefore, using this we get the a matrix here as Two point four two into ten to the power eight seven point three into ten to the power seven zero two point four two into ten to the power eight zero eight point 4 1 into 10 to the power 7 Newton per meter. Okay. Now, you can see many things from this A matrix. See this Q 1 1 is equal to uh, sorry this A 1 1 is equal to A 2 2 A 1 6 A 2 6 is equal to 0. Why? We have considered the laminate as 0 plus minus 45 90 symmetric. If you remember, this happens to be a quasi isotropic laminate which behaves like isotropic under in plane load. Okay. Also, because it is a, it is a, a 0 plus minus 45 and 90 symmetric, therefore, the, there is no shear extension coupling, therefore, these terms are also 0 A16, A26. Anyway, so this is A. Now, so immediately we can find out what is A inverse. Okay. Therefore, we can find out what is A inverse. Four point five five into ten to the power minus nine minus one point three into ten to the power minus nine zero. So it is same. Four point five five into ten to the power minus nine zero. 1.18 into 10 to the power minus 8. Okay. So, this is A inverse 1 by I mean meter per newton. Okay. So, we can now use epsilon x naught, epsilon y naught, gamma x y naught is equal to A inverse Nx n y n x y. If we put the values of n x n y n x y, which we have already calculated, you no, know, we have already calculated n x n y n x y for this laminate due to p and I mean internal pressure p and and the twisting moment t. So, what was n x? N x was, uh, I think N x was 500 uh, 500 mega Pascal. So, 500 to 10 to the power 6. Okay. N y was 1000 mega Pascal and N x y was 200 Sorry, this was Newton per meter. Okay, this is Newton per meter, not mega Pascal. This is Newton per meter. So, uh, if we use this, uh, we get the mid surface strains as we get the mid surface strains as epsilon x naught, epsilon y naught, 
gamma x y naught is equal to uh, point zero 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 eight point zero zero three eight five zero zero three eight five point zero zero two three seven point zero zero two three seven okay so this is uh, the mid surface strains of the laminate now in absence of curvature because it is only subjected to in plane load and it's a symmetric laminate therefore in absence of curvature this is the strain in all the lamina Now, we have the mid surface strains therefore, we can now find out what are the uh, now this is the mid surface strains with respect to x y. Okay. Please note that this is the lamina 0 plus 45 minus 45 90 like this. So, this is x okay. this was y or sorry or okay, same thing I mean this is y and this is z. Okay. So, now this is 0 then this is plus 45 this is minus 45. So, this is 1 this is 2 for plus 45 this is 1 this is 2 for minus 45 this is 1 this is 2. So, now we determine the material axis strains okay material axis strains in each lamina from how how do you do that using strain transformation epsilon 1 epsilon 2 gamma 1 2 by 2 is equal to T. We have already defined what is that same stress transformation because we have divided the strains by 2 epsilon x epsilon y gamma x y. So, we can find out the strains in each layer okay. material axis strains in each layer. So, the material axis strains in each layer so, lamina 1 it comes out to be same of, of course, 0 0 0 8 8 then 0 0 3 8 5 this is 0 0 2 3 7 okay. this is epsilon 1 epsilon 2 gamma 1 2 then in layer 2 this is 0 degree in 45 degree it is 0 0 3 5 5 0 0 1 1 8 0 0 2 9 6 in layer 3 it is minus 45 degree it is 0 0 1 1 8 0 0 3 5 5 minus 0 0 2 9 6 minus 0 0 2 9 6 in layer 4 which is 90 degree this is 0 0.00385 0 0 0 0 0.00088 and minus 0 0.00237 
So, it continues like this we can write for all the 16s, but it will be same like again another 0 degree will come okay, which will be same as 1 again another uh, 45 minus 40 like that. Okay. And then we calculate the material axis stresses from this we calculate the material axis stresses how sigma 1 sigma 2 tau 1 2 is equal to q we have already uh, uh, determined q for u, u d lamina uh, epsilon 1 epsilon 2 gamma 1 2 and what we get is this sigma 1 for 1 is uh, 1.38 into 10 to the power 8 for 2 sorry this sigma 2 tau 1 2. So, sigma 2 is 4.19 into 10 to the power 7 and tau 1 2 is 1.4 into 10 to the power 7 this is 0 degree. Similarly, for 45 it is 5 into 10 to the power 8 then 2.4 into 10 to the power 7, 1.7 into 10 to the power 7, layer 3 minus 45 is 1.7 into 10 to the power 8, 3.99 into 10 to the power 7 minus 1.7 into 10 to the power 7. Then layer 4 which is 90 degree this is 5.4 into 10 to the power 8 2.2 1 into 10 to the power 7 minus 1.4 into 10 to the power 7 and it continues. Okay. Now, we can use appropriate failure criterion. Suppose we use using maximum stress criterion, we compare the material axis stresses to the corresponding strength. Okay. We th I think we have discussed that in details in our uh, failure of laminates. Say for example, here sigma 1 is positive, therefore it has to be compared with sigma 1 T u. Sigma 2 is positive, therefore it has to be compared with sigma 2 T u. Okay. Similarly, tau 1 2 is compared with tau 1 2 u. Okay. So, when you take this ratio, that means we try to find out what is the failure index, like what is the how far it is from. Uh, the stress induced in the material direction is how far it is from the corresponding strength and that ratio is called failure index. Okay. So, for lamina 1, say for lamina 1, okay, for lamina 1, for I mean this is 0 degree for sigma 1 by sigma 1 T u this comes out to be point zero six zero. Okay. Then sigma 2 by sigma 2 T u comes out to be point seven three 5 tau 1 2 by tau 1 2 u comes out to be 0.18. Please check that. Okay. Similarly, lamina 2 45 degree uh, this comes out to be 0.22, this is 
0.42, this is 0.23. Laminar 3 minus 45 degree, uh, this comes out to be 0 0.07 this is 0.7 and this is 0.23. Lamina 4 90 degree, this comes out to be 0 0.24, 0 0.38 and then 0 0.18. Now, if you look at this, what we have done is the material axis stresses are compared to the corresponding strength and we can see that among all this, this is the highest. That means, if we increase the load, then this lamina 1 in the transverse direction will first reach its corresponding strength. When this is equal to 1, it fails. Okay? Now, under this loading, it does not fail. So, how far it is from the failure? Therefore, the if we keep on increasing the load when it reaches 1, this will fail. That means, what is the factor of safety? Factor of safety is 1 by 0.735, that is comes out to be 1.32. Our desired factor of safety was 1.3 that means, it is still within the operating desired factor of safety. So, it is factor of safety is 1.3. Okay. Therefore, this carbon epoxy uh, laminate which we have uh, chosen to replace the aluminum uh, will serve the purpose. It will not fail under this internal load, internal pressure intensity P and the uh, twisting moment T and it, it, it is operating factor of safety is 1.32. Note that the thickness of the aluminum was, the thickness of the aluminum cylinder was, what was the thickness of the aluminum cylinder? It was uh, 5 or 4.84. Okay? So, the H for aluminum was 5 mm and H for carbon epoxy is 4 mm. That means, it is even thinner. In addition to that, the density of aluminum is 2800 kg per meter cube, whereas that for carbon epoxy is 1600 kg per meter cube. Therefore, the for a given area, for a given area, uh, the mass of aluminum is A into thickness into density, right? Uh, I mean this thickness should be actually uh, um, I mean uh, converted into a meter. So, 10 to the power minus 3 okay? and for carbon epoxy mass area into 4 into 10 to the power minus 3 into sorry this is uh, for aluminum this is 2800 let me write it again. Area into 5 millimeter into 2800 and this is 1600. Okay. If the area is also in meter square, then this is say uh, kg. Okay. This is the mass. So, what is the savings? If we see this, that uh, the in this case, uh, this comes out to be uh, 
this comes out to be 14 uh, a kg and this comes out to be 6.4 a kg okay therefore the percentage saving is percentage weight saving is uh, 14 minus 6.4 divided by 14. So, this comes out to be roughly 54 percent. That means, by replacing aluminum with uh, carbon epoxy, we could save 54 percent of the weight. Okay? That means, the weight of that cylinder will be 54 percent uh, you know less than the aluminum cylinder and it is equally strong. Of course, uh, uh, just to demonstrate this, I have just like that taken a uh, quasi isotropic carbon epoxy laminate. Of course, I have explained why I have taken quasi isotropic 0 degree will take care of the sigma x stress, 90 degree will take care of the sigma y stress and plus minus 45 degree will take care of the in plane shear stress. However, this may not, this may not be the optimum solution. You may have even uh, 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 I mean you may have a better laminate which will give rise to even further weight minimization. Okay? Therefore, this is actually an optimization problem where you can optimize the stacking sequence of a material and the material for minimizing the weight. Okay? So, you can actually uh, optimize the material and stacking sequence with an objective of minimum weight of course with the constraint that it should not fail okay it is safe with the constraint that it is within the operating desired operating safety in addition to that uh, this analysis i have shown using maximum stress theory okay instead of maximum stress theory you can we can use psi hill theory okay, and see what is the optimum stacking sequence that leads to. Okay. So, you may try this with using psi hill theory or using some other laminate. I have taken carbon epoxy, you may see it will be interesting. I mean you can see that if you use glass epoxy, definitely the density of glass epoxy is more compared to that of uh, carbon epoxy. You can see that uh, what is the uh, I mean the, for the same stacking sequence whether you get any weight savings using glass epoxy or not. I will stop it here today. So, so what we have learned today is that uh, we have through an example, we could understand that how uh, using fiber uh, uh, reinforced uh, polymer matrix composites instead of conventional metallic materials leads to weight savings uh, at the same time uh, uh, ensuring the safety of the uh, of the component, okay, but we have not considered other issues like we will discuss those things uh, later in details that there may be uh, interfacial failures and all that that part we have not considered. We have just considered a thin cylinder and uh, considering maximum principle uh, I mean maximum stress theory, we could demonstrate that uh, uh, that instead of aluminum if we use uh, carbon epoxy laminate, we get a huge weight savings there. Thank you.